Something like a dodge roll or a dash ability can be quite pivotal to a lot of games that you'll want to make. And it's actually remarkably easy to create something like this. We're going to go over two methods here to create something like this. Uh, one is very, very easy, but requires a little bit of animation, and or one that is purely programmatic. So I'm here in a new empty Unreal project, and I made a quick animation here and when i say a quick animation what i did is i took one of the existing animations and i modified it ever so slightly uh, to make a very crude looking dodge roll and the important bit is that if i open this in the level sequence where i made this animation uh, it's over here you will see that it actually moves throughout the world it actually moves forwards and that is because i'm animating the root bone coming back in here after you've made your animation, whatever it might look like, making sure that the root bone actually moves forward the amount that you want your dodge roll to move forward, you're going to look for enable root motion. If that's not enabled, you can see we see the animation actually moving forward, but when the animation ends, we're going to move back to where the animation started in its position. If you enable root motion, it cancels out that root motion and will actually apply that to your character in the game whenever this animation plays rather than just on the mesh and we're going to use that in our blueprint here so this is just your default third person blueprint and we're going to add in a event here for the shift key and this is simply going to play a animation montage i should point out that if you right click on any of these green animation sequences and you right click it you can create an anim montage from those i do have a video specifically about anim montages if you're not overly familiar with them but that creates one of these assets with a blue line and these are animation montages which you can use to play through your code like this so we want to play our uh, dodging animation here and that is pretty much it for now so if we go into the game and I press the shift key, we play our dodging animation and we move forward. That is as easy as it gets. Again, it's very animation based and for a lot of games that you're going to be playing, they're going to use something like this. So for the most part, this will be fine. Now, during a dodge roll, you're going to want to be invincible and you might want to do a lot of other stuff as well, like it taking up some of your stamina, all that kind of stuff we're not going to get into right now. That's just adding or subtracting to certain variables on your character. Uh, but what I do want to show is for invincibility, you can just make a like iframes bool and just enable and disable that. That works perfectly fine. I prefer to do it a different way, and that is by adding a gameplay tag to this character. And we're going to be adding a new gameplay tag and we will call that uh, something like status which will be the parent tag and then uh, invincible i'll just call it inv for now that will add us a new tag which we can now put on this character as long as we have a tag container on the character then when we play the animation montage we get a float out and that is the length of how long the animation will play for so with this, we can add in a delay node, which will just delay whatever code we put after it for however long our animation montage is. And then, after that delay is completed, we can remove that gameplay tag again. And we remove from that same tag container that we have here, we remove the status invincible. Now we can just check this tag container for whether or not we are invincible or not. Effectively, in just an example like this, this is the same as flipping a bool on or off, but now we have this tag set up for our project, and if we have other characters, like a lot of enemies, that might need to be invincible as well, we don't need to go adding a bool to every single one of them. We can just add a tag container and set the tags to whatever we need them to be. Which helps prevent a lot of clutter in here, because you don't need like 20 different bools for 20 different things. You just have one tag container which contains the tags, whether or not things are turned on or off. That's a little side tangent, uh, but for now, that is the animation montage method. We also, what we can do is, uh, for this we'll say, uh, we'll do this on left control or something. We can make something a little bit more akin to a dashing move, rather than the dodge roll that we've just made. 
And for this, you're going to need some particle systems. So I got a particle system of the marketplace here, and I think this one looks pretty good. You can do this in a couple of different ways. The way I uh, did at the beginning of the video is with a particle system component, which is a particle system that just continuously produces particles as long as it's alive. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to spawn in the particle systems instead. So when we press left control, what we're going to do is we'll spawn Niagara system at location uh the location will just be wherever our actor is so i'll get actor location the rotation and the scale don't really matter for now we do want it to auto activate whenever we spawn it and we want to auto destroy whenever it is done playing then we're going to get our character mesh and we're going to set visible to not being visible anymore if you have any weapons or anything propagate to children will also make all of the other things that are parented to your mesh invisible at the same time and from that we're going to uh launch character and we will simply get the actor forward vector which is just the direction that the actor is facing in the world and we will multiply that by just right click this and convert this to a float uh by how powerful our dashing ability should be so let's say a thousand this is probably way too much and that's going to go into the launch velocity here uh we want to overwrite the x and the y uh maybe not necessarily the z if you don't overwrite the z you will still keep falling as you do this if you do overwrite the z it's going to reset your z velocity so that is the velocity up and down to being zero that's that you're going to start immediately falling again unless you set your specific uh, gravity to zero as well that's not something that we're going to bother with here today because it's a little bit annoying to deal with and then again we set a delay for how long our dash should be so let's say 0 0.4 seconds or something like that uh, then we're going to spawn another particle system for when we blink back into existence and we'll get our mesh and also set our new visibility to true this time so what will happen here is we press the left control key we spawn a particle system which i actually do need to specify which system we spawn then our mesh is going to set to be invisible then our character launches forwards we wait 0.4 seconds and then we spawn another one of the same particle system and we blink back into existence and as you can see that creates our blinking system a little something like this so we have a option for dodge rolling when we press the shift button and an option for blinking when we press the control button and as i showed you before if i blink in midair i still do fall down and the same also goes for uh, the dodge roll thing if i try to do that in midair i still do just simply fall down the easiest way to prevent that is getting your character movement and uh, setting the gravity scale uh, to zero and that will fix that and then at the end of your ability you set the gravity scale back to whatever it was before and of course we can also do the adding of the gameplay tags uh, with the blinking ability here too so we can add the gameplay tag at the start and then at the very end we can remove the gameplay tag and I know it's not necessarily part of this tutorial, uh, but I do want to show you a little bit more about how to use these tags, because if you have an enemy or something that will then try to deal damage to your character, but it needs to check whether or not uh, it has the invincibility tag, what you can do is you can use the has uh, tag now, so actor has tag, and there you can put in whatever target. So if you're on your enemy, you have a reference to the player, you check whether or not it has a specific tag on that actor. And that will just check all the tag containers in here to see whether or not any of them contain that specific tag. And the easiest way to uh, get the proper tag name, you, you can just type it in like the thing we uh, typed in before, status.inv, but this is a little bit iffy to work with. So what I usually like to do is um, get tag name and that allows you to just put that in here and then we can make literal gameplay tag and that way we can just simply say okay this tag get a name and check for that it's a little bit of a tangent about gameplay tags they're really useful to use especially with things like invincibility which goes well with things like dodge rolls and blinking or dashes or whatever you want to call it so if you want to 
play around a little bit with this project file and this little note setup that I have here with the very horrible animation <laughs> that I've made for you. There's a link down below in the description to my Patreon or for YouTube members, there's also a link down below there where you can download these project files and you can support me while you're at it. And that will be very much appreciated. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 